rather than just give you the Pythagorean identities, I want to derive them for you so you understand where they came from. But you know, many of the relationships in trigonometry come from the Pythagorean theorem. And so we're going to start with a right triangle, and we'll call this theta. And we'll start, we know the relationship is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so what we're going to do is we're going to divide each side, or each term, which is the same thing as dividing each side, by c squared. And so then I know that if I have, if both of these are squared, I can rewrite that as a over c squared plus b over c squared equals 1. So in this, with relationship to theta, a over c is actually the opposite over the hypotenuse. And so remember the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so a over c is going to be sine, so we're going to have the sine of theta squared. b over c, adjacent over hypotenuse, is going to be the cosine of theta squared, and that's going to equal 1. And so the actual notation for squaring a trig function to to alleviate, you know, having to write down those parentheses, we actually put the square on the word. So sine squared theta is equal to sine theta squared. You don't want to write sine of theta squared. That means something completely different there. You're squaring the theta. So we get cosine squared theta equals 1. This is the first Pythagorean identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is always equal to 1. Remember, an identity is something that's always true. So we can derive the other two trigonometric, uh, excuse me, Pythagorean identities by just using little tricks. And so the first one, we're going to start, the, the, uh, this will be the second Pythagorean identity. We're going to start with the first. We'll start with the sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And in this t case, if we divide each side by cosine squared, Now we get the sine squared over cosine squared is actually the same as tan squared theta. Cosine over cosine here would, would equal 1. I do love that little eraser. Plus 1. The 1 over the cosine is equal to the secant, so we have secant squared. So here is your second. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and using sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 derive the third Pythagorean identity by dividing each sign by sine squared and then start the video. So dividing each by sine squared theta We get 1 plus, well, cosine over sine is cotan, so that'd be cotan, cotan squared theta. 1 over sine is cosecant, so we have cosecant squared theta. And so there's your third Pythagorean identity. So what I, what I usually tell people to do is worry about the first one. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 is something that's going to come back again, and we're going to use that more often. And you need to know all three, but again, if you... You know, if memorizing is not your thing, obviously the more you use something, the the better recall you have on it. But if you memorize the first one and you understand where the other two come from, you can always derive them pretty quickly for a test. So let's look at, let's summarize this. We've got our three Pythagorean identities, and we can use these to answer some questions. So it says, given that sine theta equals 3 fifths, and theta is an acute angle, find the value of cosine theta. So if I want to find the value of cosine, I'm looking for the Pythagorean identity that has cosine in it. So I would just start by writing that down. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Now I'll substitute the 3 fifths in for sine, so that's 3 fifths squared plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Cosine squared theta, 
will equal 1 minus 9 over 25. So cosine squared theta would be 25 over 25 minus 9, so that would be 16 over 25. Now if I take the square root of each side, I would put the plus or minus, but again, since we're in the first quadrant, all the trigonometric functions are positive. We're later going to look at the other three quadrants where the signs of the trigonometric functions change. And so here we've got the cosine of theta is going to equal just four-fifths. So once we, if we know one trigonometric function, we can find the values of others by using these Pythagorean identities.